from Clinic Natropia. I'm with Mr. Gerald Welshaw from Belgium. Today uh, we want to represent you non-dual biodynamics and uh, what is the, the meaning of this and how he come to understanding of all the biofields of the human body and the combine the many scientific knowledge inside of this new method. So, hello Gerald, glad to be with me in my clinic and could you represent us and say how, who are you and how to come to this understanding of biofields and healing of the human body? Yes, thank you very much for welcoming me here. Hello everybody who is watching this. Um, my name is Gerald Westhoff and I'm originally from the Netherlands and I currently reside in Belgium. And um, we're here today to discuss and introduce non dual biodynamics in Bulgaria. Um, in the end, uh, also, we will discuss about uh, giving here an introduction seminar. Uh, so, that's also the purpose of my mm -hmm. visit here. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, so, um, non dual biodynamics is very simply said the non dual, which means to see through the delusion of separateness and also the biodynamics, which is all the processes which are um, uh, in the whole human system, in the whole body field, which includes the psyche, the character, the organs, the brain, the mind itself, but also the energetics um, on a functional level. Uh, so very simply said, seeing through our separateness is part of our identification um, and if we don't identify with things when we see beyond the identification then it already takes off a lot of loads and most of what we call uh, mistakenly in some cases diseases um, are, is basically a functional process um, that is seeing through um, yeah, what's going on inside the body and not just from knowledge but especially experiencing it ourselves and from there we can transform. Okay, so what is your, uh, how to say, insight from where started all this insight what you are now explaining to us? I know that is from youngers of your age and yes. how it comes. Yes, so I will uh, stay in non-dual biodynamics, there is a layering. Mm -hmm. And this layering is partly coming from my long um, experience as a, as a master of Go, which is... So what is the Go? Could yeah. you explain to Bulgarian <laughs> yeah. public? Because I, okay. I think they are not so familiar with this um, okay. great game. Okay. Uh, so when I was young, uh, I was um, at my 15th year involved already in studying, for example, Krishnamurti and Osho, that is one thing. And I learned uh, an ancient uh, Chinese game, but which is considered by some people a martial art. And it is the most difficult strategic game in the world, but the rules are extremely simple. So it has more possibilities than chess a lot more chess is 10 to the 50th and go is 10 to the 200th really so that's more interesting than, yes, is it is like layering inside of the game yes it is a layering a, of the strategic i think yes but not just the strategic it's also visual so we are talking about something which is like a painting or any form of art mm -hmm. you create something from nothing Okay. So emptiness. It's like an eater. Uh, it's it is like <laughs> eater, but 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 a very simple model, mm -hmm. I would say. Um, so go is played with two people, and it is called a surrounding game as well. Um, it has more possibilities than subatomic uh, particles in the whole universe. Um, when a person is playing it, it there is nothing there. So like our body, it is neutral, it's empty. Just like our lives, just like a new business, just like a painting, we start with nothing. Mm -hmm. And from there, we place a stone on the board 
and we try to build walls to surround an area. Shielding. Shielding, kind Skin. of shielding, but more like a membrane uh, holding an organ. Mm -hmm. And then I come to the next layer already in the biodynamics, and that is the fascia or the connective tissue, which I call the fluid tissue in the body. Mm -hmm. um, so from learning how to play Go, I played it at the National European and uh, World Championships. I went to Asia and uh, there I studied it in Japan for about six years, which is a Buddhist country. And I already did Vipassana and Zazen and those things. Um, but when playing Go on the top level, um, at the same time already doing meditations, I at, one, at a certain moment uh, when I was 19 years old and a student, I had not eaten for one week. And Nothing? I, well, just water. And, just water. Yes. So like a cleansing. Mm -hmm. And then I went to the European Championship and I spoke already some Japanese at the time, so I was translating five languages. And at that moment I was staying inside, uh, it was in Switzerland, in the Alps, in an uh, atomic bunker. So it was behind big steel doors. It was really, how should I say, um, uh, like a huge cave in the mountain. Mamma mia. And, uh, it's a big experience, I think. How well, was it? It, it was, it was um, I didn't have any expectation when going into it's it. It's like inside of the womb feeling, probably. It, it, was, um, it, it was like nothingness. If nothingness. I would call it that because it was pitch dark, black, no light. Uh, nobody was in this room of uh, eight bunk beds. Uh, there was no time, there was no air uh, change, nothing at all was changing. It's like, um, yeah, being even without any sounds. Um, so the only thing which is there is uh, the thoughts in the mind. And looking and seeing your thoughts pass by in five different languages, is, uh, to say the least, very interesting because you don't have any other input. So you really become focused, one-pointed on those thoughts. And there is a stillness between thoughts. There is a nothingness which is deeper than this nothingness which you and I can put in words. Mm -hmm. And that is simply a deep stillness. So uh, at my 19th year, I had this let's call it a, a deep, profound, uh, abiding awakening. And that has never left me from that time. It was the realization that we're not our thoughts, that we're not our feelings, that we're not our body, but that we are something totally different. We can call it awareness and consciousness, but it's simply even not that. Okay, but can you feel your energy system when you are in this cocoon stage? Because I know some kind of a shamanic technique where they use in Peru and Mexico, they put the people inside of the cave, dark, nothing to eat, just water for several days or a week exactly, to clean them energy system, to clean the mind and to teach them how to starts to see them energy system and especially to feel them energy system. Um, I don't know about this specific... Uh, that this what, is a specific shamanic technique. This is I, something part of what you, you done, but this mm -hmm. is uh, like a tradition of mm -hmm. these places. Mm -hmm. Even for so sick people, for mm -hmm. long-lasting diseases, mm -hmm. They recommend them mm. those kind of techniques. Yes, possibly I know ayahuasca. I've never used it. Um, no, it's nothing with but, ayahuasca, but, but, mushrooms, but, yes. or something. No, I, just I pure only, in I only, darkness. I only know that when you are totally deprived from any um, sensory input. Uh, and they've done a very interesting uh, experiment uh, mm -hmm. at the university and it was putting people in a small room without anything mm -hmm. and the only thing they could do was give themselves an electric shock mm -hmm. in order to be not alone with their own thoughts. And very interestingly, 60% of the male students gave themselves this painful shock over and over again not to be with their own thoughts. So to understand the nature of human suffering, 
um, usually that is with identifying with our thoughts, believing our thoughts are true, which actually they are not. Mm -hmm. So to really see beyond our thoughts is for any person uh, a very welcome, um, yes, uh, Exercise, I should say. Yeah, but not it that kind of layering, I think, of yes, us. Yes, no? yes. I was simply staying there by coincidence, I would say. Since I was a student, I did not have much money. And it was the cheapest place to stay the night, uh, cheaper than the hotel or whatever. And it brought me a, a huge gift, which I was not actually aware of what it was. Uh, until much later when I studied Advaita Vedanta, which gave me the, the word. So the Bhagavad Gita is a very, very old book in Hindi, mm. in, in India, and that is the basis for much of uh, the teachings which gurus are giving in satsang. Mm -hmm. So um, non-duality is basically passing through these uh, delusions, as I call them, um, and they also are basis for a lot of, and I call it, the emotional hooks which mm -hmm. we are feeling. Mm -hmm. And an identification has a dent. So when in your system there is a dent and believing there is a separate self, that is a very, very big uh, dent already, it means that your dent is a place where all your emotional um, yeah, uh, trauma can uh, stay in. Um, now, to go back to the timeline, mm -hmm. yeah? uh, so I went to Japan and I uh, studied after that Shiatsu, I studied some uh, Reiki, um, energy healing, quantum touch, earth healing field, um, a uh, medical course, uh, I did then cranial sacral therapy, and all of these are helping further to, as I call it, develop. So you layer it yourself? Yes. Your knowledge? Yes. Layers ba by layer? Basically, it's like an onion taking a layer by layer away from it. Mm -hmm. And uh, taking from all the teachers who I've had certain ideas, certain concepts, and integrate it into myself, put it in my own words, um, in a way that it becomes totally clear, very simple to learn, um, but when you are deepening to this inner stillness or inertia, as we may call it, mm -hmm. um, into our core, uh, it, it, it generates a huge energy at the same time. Uh, so if we take our human energy field, and I've been, since I was small, able to sense and feel energy, um, at that moment when you open this inner core more and more, when you have less emotions and other identifications to hold on to, then it is possible to, as I used to say, realize a lot more. So your health increases, your potency increases, your well-being increases, um, and it, it starts to shine through. Mm -hmm. yes. So this is inner core, can we say that this is like a central channel, what they use in uh, uh, Indian medicine, Chinese medicine, we this can... is a central channel, or Nadi, Sushumna, yes. Pinda, yes. you yes. call this the main yes. channel inside of the energy yes. system of the human. Yes, and you can compare it with that, but in embryonic, so in mm -hmm. the embryonic state, every vertebrate um, mammal mm -hmm. uh, has a notochord. Mm -hmm. The notochord is basically the first core which arises when we are formed. So in vivo, so not in vitro, but in vivo, in real life, when an ovum, so a female cell, is met with the sperm, it's not like in male thought um, idea that the first sperm uh, wins. It's not like no, all it's like never that. Like this. It's uh, that all these sperms which we have is functional and they all have a tail. They have ejected everything except for being 
focused and movement. Mm -hmm. And the ovum has really spread out. It's the largest cell in the whole body. And both of them cannot survive by themselves. So from polarity, they are attracted like one side of the earth mm -hmm. to the other. When they arrive, these sperm cells, they are attaching themselves to the outside of the ovum. But in and, the specific places, and, you know, they said it's supposed it's, to form uh, the seat of light. Yes, and it starts to rotate. Mm -hmm. So it can be... A, they I make see it, like a Faraday like cage. Like a dance. Like a, like. It's like a dance, actually. Yeah. Two um, polarities meet each other. Yeah, and form Faraday cage. Yes, actually. and then it is like opening from both sides, allowing a, a merger. So you already get a core. Mm -hmm. Now this is basically our notochord, our midline, and from there, light is being used in order to make a blueprint mm -hmm. in which form arises. So the torus form actually like inside this inertia, yes. like yes. a hyperbola, then yes. magnetical yes. parts like a yes. torus, yes. and electricity in the between. It's yes. like Tesla said, 369, no? Yes. If uh, you know it, you know everything. Yes, it's it's um, and, and, and if you see it, you cannot unsee it, as I mm -hmm. call it. So at the moment, I have two, two sons, um, uh, they're now uh, adults already. Um, but at the moment of conception, I, I saw like a firework. I saw actually, and before uh, the mother of my boys knew that uh, we were pregnant, I told her, we are pregnant in those two cases. I knew it, I saw it. And that's quite amazing. And only very recently we found that when the sperm enters, there is a zinc oxide mm -hmm. which gives off light. Mm -hmm. So you can see actually already this form inside the, yeah, the, in, inside the first cell. Mm -hmm. And it's wonderful. Yeah. It's good. So then you form some kind of bank of so many layers, but actually this is one membrane like a hole on there model of uh, Mr. Yes. Lorenzen. Yes, yes, so what I've integrated further into the biology and the energy is as a model, and Dirk Leisen, he is a genius who is mm -hmm. an inventor in, in Belgium, he has made a very, very clear um, uh, layering of how that what is our source or God or union or Brahman or the Absolute, how actually we can visualize uh, with our limited senses and capacities, how we can visualize how everything is layered inside each other, like fields within fields within fields. And that is what we also... With invaginations, actually. They're not separate, you just... They... It's the common membrane invaginates yes. with each other and then form the yes. layers. That's why yes. everything is in interconnected, actually. Yes, so I was seeing it like a, a rubber hand glove mm -hmm. inside a balloon, going outside a balloon, going inside a balloon. And then I saw his model and I said, like, I, oh, that's even... That's it. That's yeah. Yeah, exactly like uh, how I was mm -hmm. putting words into it. So that is so. Uh, once you you come to a, a stage of clarity, you start to recognize how oh, these people have exactly the same view or, or, or words to describe it. Now, when we are talking about the craniosacral mm -hmm. system, we also use these fields within fields within fields. And once you are as an individual, so individual means not smaller to divide, which is something else than non-dual. Mm -hmm. uh, individual is not non-dual. So what mean non-dual? The non-dual is having a non-separateness, but in the connectivity. So that means that, that everything is connected. So mm -hmm. if we say we are the sea, the water is everywhere. Mm -hmm. But if we say we're the energy in the sea, which is expressed as a wave, then we can say we are an individual wave, but mm -hmm. still part of this whole ocean. sea and ocean. Yeah. Now, we have in our body, um, as we call it, a form. Uh, when you take embryology, the form arises in fluids. Mm -hmm. So these fluids are our energetic ingredient, I would say, if I label myself with a barcode in a supermarket, the biggest ingredient here would be... IP. <laughs> Your IP, actually. <laughs> yes. So then I would be 
some kind of a product which says uh, moisture or water. Mm -hmm. And um, recently, uh, Gerald Pollack uh, has made very clear there is a fourth kind of water, which is called um, structured water, mm -hmm. or also called um, yeah, uh, exclusion zone water if it's in the body mm -hmm. between. Um, this is the fourth organs. state of water. That's the fourth state of water, mm -hmm. yes. And that is, energetically speaking, what is happening in our body. So from these layers and layers and layers, fields within fields within fields, you have to understand that if I yes. take this, this person here, yeah, it's, it is like an orange. Our human body is like an orange. So we have our outer skin and if I would open this person, there would be smaller particles mm -hmm. like an orange inside with other membranes around it, around the stomach, around that. And in the old days, we used to cut out the connective tissue and just look at the organs and take away all those membranes. Put this to be more yes. But if we nowadays look what is the most important, and that is something which often we cannot see. Mm -hmm. um, nowadays, we all have Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. And in the body, the human body, we cannot see with our eyes that there is an electromagnetic field inside and outside the body. So that is basically where the form in the fluids arises. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Are you still following me? Yes. Yes? Okay, I hope the people uh, out there also follow me. But it means that every organ has an electromagnetic field by itself, mm -hmm. but they are part and layered within. Mm -hmm. So what we're working with already in the craniosacral uh, history is feeling, palping, palpating, so really with hands on, the fascia, the fluid tissue. Mm -hmm. And what is the properties of the fascia, mm -hmm. of the fluid tissue, as I call it, it is that it is holding sometimes a trauma or anything. Collecting trauma. Yes, that it cannot digest directly. What is again electromagnetical being actually? Yeah, everything in us is electromagnetic yes, base. Yes, but in case of with our experience. Experience with different density. The, the, yes, it, it, it is coming into something like, for example, if we are well resourced, we can deal with something, but if it suddenly arises and it really is life threatening, mm -hmm. um, like a car accident, or your father or mother suddenly dies, or you see something of aggression in front of mm -hmm. you, or it happens to you, it will immediately cause a reaction. Your body already does something in order to prevent, mm -hmm. eh, to tighten. Where do you go still? Actually, what is the, how to say, expression of gravity? Um, yes, 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 like yes, 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 but that is the core, the core yeah. itself, as I call it. Is no, but when you form like a uh, disease, this is additional uh, yes. entity which attached to the main. Yes, I don't use the word entity, I just use the word like a, a fulcrum. Okay. A fulcrum is, um, for people who are not English speaking, like um, a hinge. So if I would have uh, uh, in a children's playground where mm -hmm. it goes up and down, this part here is a hinge, but it's uh, the, so the fulcrum. So the place around everything rotates, but it's also um, the eye of a hurricane. So if we know a hurricane and there is the deep inner eye with the high pressure or low pressure, and there is the blue sky. Mm -hmm. And as I mentioned, we are not our thoughts. We are like a blue sky and the clouds are simply passing. So if we can remain in this deep state of our inner core and in non-dual biodynamics, we focus on opening and widening our inner core mm -hmm. through working with another person or other persons, then this will allow us to let go all those layerings which were holding, all those trauma, all those energies. To disperse them, if they are like this, to become more dispersed, yes. or to disappear. Yes. yes, so when a person is laying supine, and this is fields within fields within fields, mm -hmm. fluids within mm -hmm. fluids within fluids, 
and another person who would be standing here and holding his own fulcrum, his mm -hmm. inner core, mm -hmm. his notochord, well centered in stillness, it means he is able to hold this whole field in a new balance. Mm -hmm. That means that well, that what is being held here can kind of be released uh, in a flow, becoming more fluid, so that without any effort on this person's part, it can come into um, a movement and simply dissolve. It is because we are not just an individual, but because we are non-dual, meaning we are part of everything, which we can also call God. Mm -hmm. So to work on this way with another client, with another uh, recipient, I would prefer mm -hmm. to call them, that means these people are able to let go of anything that is held inside their mm -hmm. body at that moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. So. How uh, in biodynamics you feel the difference? For example, mm. if you have some damage on the knee and you put your hands on them, and what mm. you feel actually, yes. like a therapist. Yes, so um, as we know, psyche, body, energy, um, they are not separate. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, what we are using is, of course, our own perception, palpable, but also to understand, for example, what we're calling uh, sickness, that it is as based on Dr. Hammer's... Uh, mm -hmm. uh, New German uh, medicine? Yes, the natural laws, that all these processes are basically functional. Mm -hmm. They are only kept into, I would say, a survival mode, either fight-flight response, mm -hmm. In non-dual biodynamics, it, I don't only look at the fight-flight-freeze response, mm -hmm. but also to the social response. Mm -hmm. So we've got both hemispheres. So you keep a balance of both sides, not just the male idea of uh, the, I would say, the fight-flight-freeze mm -hmm. response, but also the social, which is the female, which I would say is the food for friend response. Mm -hmm. It may sound very uh, exciting. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, it's very simple. When we are having a problem, in the female way, we can discuss it. We can socialize about it. We mm -hmm. can also, um, like the bonobochi and bonzis are doing, mm -hmm. uh, lay on our back, like we see in the cats and things like that. That is not what I'm saying right here now, but mm -hmm. we have to be aware that we have all kinds of social interaction. Mm -hmm. That means that if we cannot solve it by ourselves, somebody else can help us. Mm -hmm. So what I'm calling this work is body work of the soul. Mm -hmm. So we guide the person to his or her inner stillness and at the same time being conscious. So it means that here you have our uh, collective conscious, here you've got our individual consciousness, here you've got your divine conscious, and you try to balance them, to harmonize them. Now, if we do that on the layering in the body, we can simply feel where are the differences. We can use this one, it yeah. looks like it's... Um lay down the patient for yes. it's easy to, to yeah. show to the people. So first we will, do. So first we will um, check with this person if he or she is okay to receive the treatment. Because you if you ask. go, you ask, you always need you to need have permission. permission. Because it's like nature, we're holding not just uh, a body with complaints, mm -hmm. we're holding a whole human uh, history. And this human being is uh, a history of three billion years old. And you take some kind of history about this person. Mm, like yes, we what always. What is the suffering? How? When? We will hear situations. from this person what needs attention. Mm -hmm. But sometimes people do not express immediately what is held inside them. Mm -hmm. Now, when we touch another person, and then I go a little bit further back to my Asian experience where we have Tai Chi, for example. Mm -hmm. Tai Chi is a martial art, but at the same time we have Qi Neng and Qi Gong, which is the energetic and body healing. Mm -hmm. So the cranial sacral layering is same, similar, like Qi Neng and mm -hmm. Qi Gong. Now going back to this body, you will feel when you put your hands on a person, not just the place where you 
touch this mm -hmm. person because everything is connected. So that's why in Tai Chi, your grandmaster doesn't want you to touch him because you can feel in the body where he or she is having his or her weak points. Okay. Yeah. So you can just touch this person and you, you already feel the movements in the fascia. So you just continue with this person making a scan not just you with your experience as a practitioner, mm -hmm. but it is all about the recipient. So you ask again what, you, what they feel. You what? ask what they feel because they feel inside their body where they feel pain, but we orientate and we focus always to health. Mm -hmm. And health is something when it's there, we don't notice it. It's simply really a, a layer of well-being. Now, if we are well, we don't need to pay attention to it. It's yes. all fine. So I say our attention goes where attention is. And, and then I do this. And you see already a line is forming through the tissue directly here. So when we feel pain in our it's stomach... It's more easy like this, you know? Yeah. When you just turn, everything is turning. Yes. See yes. when you turn like this yes. and yes. just go. Yes. Or directly yes. from this side. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So this is basically our first understanding to deepen into this yeah. on a state of approval, of allowing, of letting the body show what it is, the system to show what it is. And then you're looking together, so the client is describing or the recipient is telling what he or she is feeling and sensing. So this orientating you, what they have on this place of their emotion or of their senses, yes. telling you something. Yes, yes. So they will always mention something, but sometimes not. Mm -hmm. So um, when you're sitting in nature, you don't have an expectancy and you don't judge. Mm -hmm. You just sit in nature and you let it come towards you. If you start jogging or if you start manipulating so as in the original osteopathy way it was done, then we put things in motion. Mm -hmm. um, which means that, um, just to go back to the tradition, uh, the tradition of osteopathy was um, to see where are the restrictions and to invite these restrictions to become free again. But that is done from the knowledge and the insight of the osteopath. Mm -hmm. In um, the beginning of the of last century, William Sutherland uh, was after 30 years uh, manipulative techniques, finding that manipulating did not really work that much because when he had released something, uh, the client would come back next week with, now it's here, mm -hmm. another problem. It's moving. Work. Yes, like the energy is moving. It's moving from place to place. And he found that the less he was doing, the more was happening to the client. So at one moment he simply said, I don't do anything anymore, I stop my practice and I go to investigate. Mm -hmm. And then he also put, um, how should I say, uh, a band uh, around his head because when he was looking at the skull there was this bone here, the temporal bone, mm -hmm. and he found it was just like the gills of a fish, mm -hmm. where a fish is breathing. So he thought, okay, this here is the movement of the bones and there must be something, there must be a movement. And we call this the breath of life or the respiration, which can be felt anywhere in the body. Mm -hmm. So he really used this. But the funny thing is when he was having these belts around his head and these bones are not fused, like we learn in yes. medical school, but they have sutures, they yeah. move. And the funny thing is he was getting headaches. He was getting a very bad temper. So his wife was saying, please stop take those pants off because I don't want this anymore. So we know also science uh, has found we have the craniosacral rhythm in the body, um, but it's not just between the cranium and the sacrum. It's much more than just For that. all the body. Yes, yes. So that's why I founded Non-Dual Biodynamics. 
in order to be working with this whole layer within the body, not just the craniosacral system alone, mm -hmm. um, and to include the insights uh, from both uh, and the Dr. Hammer, mm -hmm. um, both the Holog model, both uh, syntropy as I call it, mm -hmm. which is based on understanding life itself, based on science, the, the delusion of time space, um, well, and, and yes, uh, the, the results are amazing. I'm sure, but what do you think about uh, biodynamics, like you explained, between different bodies of, of the person? Because actually the closest uh, energy body to the physical, they are called eight, but they are more. Mm -hmm. Can you say that if we treat the physical body, actually we treat the biodynamics between different energetical body of the same person, well, because is it the same logic, we, no? We, we, use we go this, just fluid between the yes, energy layers. Yes, we, we use all these words to describe everything. Mm -hmm. So we cut everything what we perceive into little pieces to try to understand the whole. Mm -hmm. But the whole is always more than these little pieces. So you have to both be able to focus and hold what's happening at this layering, but also hold this whole space, mm -hmm. the whole field of both the practitioner and the recipient. So there is a focusing on your own midline, focusing on the midline of the other person, around which all these processes are happening instantly, interconnectedly, at the same time. So this I call so short sin 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 for synchronicity, for synergetically, and for Syntropy. So, syntropy. yeah, syn the syntropy would mean to understand that life does not base. We've got entropy in mm -hmm. science, mm -hmm. which means everything is dying. But of course, we are but alive. We, that we are not dying. We are alive, and our body is becoming more and more conscious and lighter and um, easier to wear, as I would call it. The older we get. Um, so, so uh, you hold these layerings. Now, in, at the moment, something is resolved at one place. Uh, it is instantly resolving in all the other layers as well. So it means, based on, for example, a, a whiplash here, mm -hmm. when it's being held, all the body will realign itself because it wants to keep the eyes and the nose horizontal. So you will get a scoliosis or you'll get a pain somewhere in the body. But once you realign or once the, 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 the recipient realigns himself to a new balance, everything will start to move. And it's also like that for uh, the psychological part, which means I will just give an example. You will see a female cat. She's walking around with her tail up. And if she wants to become pregnant, she is doing this behavior. As soon as she becomes pregnant, people uh, see that the cat is changing its mm -hmm. behavior. So the behavior, the psyche of us humans, is also involved in, let's say, jealousy or whatever, in all our bodily functions. Um, and that is expressed in this uh, body as, as well. The body itself is innocent. It does not make a difference if it is thinking what we're doing and we are dreaming a lot or imagining a lot, which is our human superpower, the power of imagination. So if we imagine something to be true, the body believes us. And doing it. And it's doing it automatically mm -hmm. or instantly. Yeah. So if we can see that what we imagine is not true, the body will relax and will open up. So most people are in their sympathetic response inside their body. And it's very difficult in current modern society to be really, really, really relaxed, but still be able to function. The more relaxed we are, the better we can function, actually. Actually, yes. Yes. It's, uh, it's like if you're sitting in front of a traffic light in your car, which can be a very fast car, 
Um, but if you have it in your gear, so you don't have an automatic and you put it in the fourth gear and it turns from red to green and you put it in the fourth gear or it's in the fourth gear and you start driving, it doesn't do much. But if you have it in neutral, you can be very swift in mm -hmm. changing your gear and getting up to speed. So the same for the body, the more we are able to remain really relaxed, mm -hmm. and that is what we're doing in this session. Yeah, because it's, it's often your inner potential, yes. actually, in emptiness, because in emptiness is everything. Yes. Okay, uh, and how goes uh, to use this technique in different things, I mean, like a tree, like a plant, animals? Yes. Well, um, if we, for example, take life itself, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, we cut ourselves, blood comes out, we get a new skin, but that skin is new, so there is forming a crust on top of it, which is a barrier to protect it. Mm -hmm. Just like when a chick comes out of its egg, uh, it's still very vulnerable uh, when a butterfly comes out of its cocoon. Mm -hmm. And you have to understand that we build these protective walls in a cocoon or uh, the eggshell, same in our body. We have these places of encapsulating something that we cannot deal with. And that means that the energy, the potency is held inside the form, inside the fluids, inside the energetics. And when I would like to call and use the word love, because love, for me, I translate as connectedness. In a connection, it's possible to release, just like in any electrical system, but in case we release this trauma, this emotion, and emotion is energy mm -hmm. and movement, emotion, when we release that, the body will dissolve this. Once it is dissolved, it's gone. It is like a discharge. It like a discharge. Thing. Like a discharge. And it's instantly. So mm -hmm. when some people had a cyst of two centimeters here and they could see what was the cause, it immediately started to dissolve. Um, the body is innocent, as I already said, so it immediately starts to work on this. Now, start say, coming back to this functionality, um, uh, the, the when we are little children, so still in the mom's womb mm -hmm. or in the first years, we only are very small, uh, fragile mm -hmm. uh, being. So the impact of trauma is big. Yeah, yeah because but, it's so much for this small being. Exactly. So if we are in nature in the forest and there is a small tree and a branch falls on it, it will crack down. Mm -hmm. One, when that happens for a young plant, it just to, continues to grow, including this bend, including this twist, including this neurosis which we have in our psyche. When this little plant becomes a big tree, you will still see inside the stem that there is a twist. But if there is the other branch which falls again, it, it doesn't matter. So the same for us humans, the trauma which we perceived when we were little in the womb is such a big impact, um, like one week in the womb is like one year later on mm -hmm. to release it again of hard uh, emotional body work. So to go back to this original space of the little one, we have to become very, very still and silent and it's beyond our thoughts. Mm -hmm. And the first 18 years is like one third of our impact uh, of trauma. The first nine months in the womb is one third. And from 18 to 82 is also one third of all the impacts which are forming who we are. Mm -hmm. So to develop, to develop, I would say, uh, to get rid of that uh, is to understand, to see through it, to acknowledge it. And knowledge is very important to get our thoughts to settle down. That in the right way. In the right way, yes, that there is clarity. And once we can see through it, we can incorporate it, and then we can experience it. And that experience is transforming us through the heart into wisdom. Mm -hmm. So in the non-dual biodynamics, I use the frame 
And the frame basically is this field, within fields, within fields. And within these fields there is, for example, everybody knows this, we feel fear. And fear itself is a downward, uh, almost like a gravity pressing mm -hmm. uh, movement. Then we've got the opposite, which is free, freedom. Fear is down, freedom mm -hmm. is this I'm free, I'm happy, I'm joyful. On this level, or dielectric level, if you want to, we have a force and a flow, so a discharge. Mm -hmm. And as um, Ken Wheeler, who you... Yes, Ken I Wheeler know, is I the know. famous guy, I love him. Yes. This is so good yes. explanation of magnetism. Exactly. And that is exactly what is also happening in our human body, because mm -hmm. we are part of nature and the universe. So that's why when you see this, and the fear and the freedom in the fluid. So this fear comes into a flux, into the fluid, inside the field, into form, into this. Materialization. Yes. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So that's why I use the F word a lot. Mm -hmm. Yes. You've got fear, you've got free, you've got a flux, you've got a form, and you've got the fluids. Mm -hmm. And we work with the fluid body in to be violence. interconnected between different exact, uh, existence exact, of uh, exactly. matter. Exactly. And once we become more fluid, we are open for changes and we become very, very real. Yeah, because we move more easy. I mean, connected yes. more easy. We are fluids, but when we hold these fluids, so the hydrogen We have no connections with other parts. Yes. And that means we can store less energy, so we've got less Health and health, I translate as like a battery. Actually, capacity. we store the free energy what we produce and encapsulate it in diseases. Mm, Sounds like yes, this. Yes, and when we yes. release this discharge, like yes. a free energy, because we are electromagnetical beings, we release mm. the free energy without bordering and without stopping. So it causes emptiness and oldness. Yes, but then so this, this, is, like this, this, this total capacity. Yeah, this is it just. It becomes Moving available. In, yes. in, out, in, in, out. Yes. It is like uh, yes. Ken Wilber said, creation and elimination of spaces yeah, exactly. all the time. Oh, exactly. It's perpetuum mobile. Yes. And this is the craniosacral rhythm, which is inside the body. It starts before the heart is formed. So already in an embryo, a fetus will already have this movement, even anything that is alive, basically, has this movement in cytoplasm. Mm -hmm. and this movement we can palpate and you can see where there are restrictions, just like a little river from the top of the mountain, mm -hmm. um, when there is some ice there, and it will block the flow of the river, and behind it you will feel this patterning. You cannot always see everything, because sometimes there is the patterning in front of it, but you know from the patterning, which you can that always something see. Exists. That something is there which has caused this. Mm -hmm. And when you can take away, not really take away, but come to neutral, so I call yin and yang, and the neutral part is yang, which is the balance part, which is the fulcrum part. And that space is our core, our gravity, our spill, around which everything uh, turns around and everything wants to be inertia. The only thing is that when it loses inertia, we identify with that what has lost our inner core. Yes, and do you know this is uh, in, in Sujok, and you know the Sujok, the author of the Sujok is Mr. Park Jibu, and he built three origin theory. Actually, in Atropia, this is what you call inner core, because for him explanation of three origin theory, in the beginning is the neutral, nothing, mm. emptiness. Mm. From the neutral come the homo, what mm. we call in in Chinese medicine, mm. something that for, form and mm. capture the energy on space, mm. like the in, like gravity. Mm -hmm. And then this energy is supposed to take a direction, motion. Mm -hmm. But take a direction, motion, it's yang, and, mm -hmm. he, and he calls hetero, something which go to move. Mm -hmm. But these two forces all the time are supposed to be in balance, mm -hmm. no? not big one and small mm -hmm. one. So they appear natural. Mm -hmm. You understand? What mm -hmm. is your, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. how you call this? You just said in a balancing part mm -hmm. in Gaiman of your. So neon, this is, is natural, mm -hmm. but it's the balancing mm -hmm. force between 
the previous mm -hmm. three. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. So see, in all the models, mm -hmm. this is like three originally is, yes. is like a base of understanding yes. and yes. fluidity, like yes. motion. Yeah. This is interconnected, uh, how to say, sign of everything. Yes, and then if we go beyond the tree, there is the dot in the Sri Yantra. Yeah, this is emptiness. Which is, Justum. yeah, the absolute. Absolute, or, ether, or whatever, whatever. we say, we cannot define it. it. It becomes totally unsayable because yeah, you need to put you, one you opposite to it. The, yeah. the God because yeah. it's not definable, it's everything. You cannot just. When you define something, you limit it to something. We no? can only say it's not that. And if yes. you think it's that, it's not that. <laughs> and if you think it's that, it's not that either. And um, that is uh, something which is possible to enliven. And that's why I call this work Satsang on the Table. Yes. And what is the meaning of this word? Uh, of satsang. Yes. Well, satsang is used in India um, a lot um, mm -hmm. when we are talking about Advaita Vedanta, when we're talking about understanding dukkha, which is Sanskrit for suffering. But suffering is not the correct translation. I would mm -hmm. like to use unease. Mm -hmm. And I love this word unease because unease is actually then the same as discomfort or dis-ease. Mm -hmm. And the wonderful thing in nature is that everything is functional. So when we are in nature and we need something, we, it shouldn't bother us. Uh, for example, we need to run away from something. But when we are safe, then we can, for example, uh, release it. Sometimes so it can safe is, is the first chakra actually, you need safe, the safetyness, it's safe, like opening the chakra yes. and opening the inner core. Yes, safe is in this work uh, of biodynamics the most important um, uh, yeah, feature, I would say. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have never really felt safe, like Dan Siegel is saying, yeah, uh, sometimes uh, you want to bond with your parents, um, and that is the place where you go to when you want to feel safe. But the unsafety, the threat, is caused by your parents, which means you come into a spagat, into a, uh, an opposite direction. You want to go away from it and you want to go to it. And this has happened to many people in our society nowadays. And when we are going to safety, for some people it is the first time to really let Hear go, themselves. yes, but also to be okay with their own discomfort, with their own pain, and they start to feel, oh, I feel all of this, but since we orientate not to unhealthy, but to health, and the, if we have a pain in our knee or in our shoulder, and the attention goes here all the time. It's just a little part of the body which forgot it's part of the whole body which is healthy. Yeah? So, so and then this, it will, this part is supposed to remember that it's part of something healthy. And the word remember, member. a member is a membrane. part of the body, is a membrane indeed, and it is getting back together. It's starting to resonate again. To reconnect to, to the re world. Exactly, and that is actually the word remember. I love language to play with these words. So in Dukkha we say unease or a disease or suffering. And what did it for me, without having a me as a result, even after my original awakening, there was still something. I was playing along just like everybody else. Um, that there is a Gerald, that there is a separate self who is wanting and saying and doing and whatever. But when you start to look at the body, the hair grows by itself. Um, the, the, Everything the grows becomes, by itself. Everything it's nothing, the nails, whatever. It's, it's, it's nothing up to you. <laughs> I, will, I cannot say stop growing and it doesn't do. And even a lizard, when it loses its tail, it will grow it back. But all of that is based on energy again. So 
on polarity. Just like mm -hmm. when you were asking about plants, if we cut off a piece, a, a, a piece of plant and we stick it again in the water, it will start roots again. Mm -hmm. So nature is energetically, the membrane which you are mentioning, is in our bones. So there is a membrane around the bones which has copper ions and that's why and how we grow back our bones together. Mm -hmm. And many doctors regretfully don't understand and think like this, but once you start to understand and see the body as an energetic field within field within field, things become much clearer and simpler of what you're feeling. Mm -hmm. So this little part of us forgot that it's part of the whole Structure. Yes. So, um, looking through Dukkha, I mean, it's written in the scriptures, there is nothing physical mm -hmm. nor non-physical that can end suffering, that can end Dukkha. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean? It only means exactly what it says, that nothing, no thing, mm -hmm. no thing, nothing can end suffering, physical or unphysical. So that means there is one little word which I skip now. Namely, there is nothing that can end your suffering. So there we go. There is nothing which can end everything. Mm -hmm. And there is your suffering. And your suffering cannot be ended. So once we realize there is no you, there is no self, and that's a just seeing it, realizing it. There is no you inside which you can find. There is no heart shirk who found a, myself in his heart or a soul in the brain or whatever. Mm -hmm. So that means this perception which we have of what we really are, our true self, is something totally beyond what we believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah. And this dukkha, so this suffering, basically is transformed after we see through realization, self-realization. Now that part is not sufficient. What you also need is a self-love, a self-appreciation, a self-acknowledgement, a self-trust, a self-confidence, which is almost unlimited in order to be able to really appreciate yourself. If you don't love yourself, your and body, know yourself. And know your self-knowledge. If that is maximized, this self will dissolve as well, because there is nothing anymore, no hold on, which is hold on to, no dent in the balloon, which is keeping anything. Mm -hmm. It will simply be able to dissolve. It's amazing. <laughs> it's very simplex, to use the word of ten. It's a very simplex. So, how goes uh, the training on this matter? Okay, so, um, the, uh, first of all, there are introduction seminars which are organized, which are uh, usually a weekend or up to four days, in which people experience, um, embody what we just now have been talking about. There is a practitioner foundation training, which is 10 courses, 10 seminars of four to five weeks. They are layered in a way that everybody will be able to deepen in everything which I've just mentioned. It is going in a very safe, grounded field, um, which means that it is an in-house uh, um, uh, residential way of being in a group. Um, the group is screened so that it's people who are stable because when we see through certain delusions which we've kept and when traumas are released, a lot of things can arise. And um, on the one hand, uh, becoming um, a practitioner also means to work and deal with your own um, skeletons in the closet, I would like mm -hmm. to call them. Um, they are in the closet because it's dark in there and if we put a light in it sometimes nothing comes out and then our power of imagination starts to work and make it even bigger. So therefore it has to be really safe. Having said that, um, so it is f two years in which there are ten seminars. How five, they go stay? 
by year? We yeah, have some five, some kind of five seminars with about one to two months between them so that people have time to really work and implement and experience and deepen uh, also by giving sessions, which is very important, not just to understand, but especially to implement experience and in order to be able to hold the field, to hold basically the field in which a, another person mm -hmm. is present. Mm -hmm. And when you're holding this field from stillness, from inertia, that hurricane which is around can simply dissipate its energy, what it's being held mm -hmm. inside the system of the other person. Mm -hmm. So it's a very fluid way of deepening and settling and widening our core. Okay, so introduction seminar is like 10 seminars one year, two the years. The foundation, foundation. Uh, fun, the foundation seminar, so the practitioner uh, education to become mm -hmm. a, a licensed uh, mm -hmm. practitioner is two years. Two years. Yes. Um, of that is about 40 to 50 days depending mm -hmm. on um, the location and for example if there is translation um, when I teach in English which is usually the case um, there will be a translator to the local language will be Bulgarian or Russian or whatever language is there and then afterward they have some kind of super master seminars, mm -hmm. updates of it's knowledge, it's possible after that if people want to, yes. So inside uh, a seminar there will always be assistants or tutors who will guide uh, the students so that whatever arises during the sessions, during uh, their own um, uh, work, uh, they have somebody who will be able to always give them feedback. Mm -hmm. Also. Um, there is a little difference from going from our history uh, of osteopathy into cranial, oste uh, cranial osteopathy to the later years of Roland Becker and William Sutherland to the work of uh, Franklin Sills, which is cranial sacral biodynamics, uh, and others. Um, this work has a very, very, very soft touch. However, when we are holding deep um, trauma, sometimes you cannot really go to the deepest level, but you have to sometimes help the system in order to remember. Mm -hmm. Now, when we are working on it, it means that sometimes there are manipulations, but they're always in this biodynamic way, mm -hmm. inside the field of listening to this recipient, to the person who is receiving it and always being focused from their perspective. Okay. Is it, does that make that clear? Yeah, let's make it clear yeah. so everyone can be practitioner or have some kind of abilities what, or education. What In a certain way everybody have. already knows it because for example when a child falls down and is crying we already put our hand behind the back or we give our hand to this knee, etc. So on the energetic level and the empathetic, emotional level, we are already connecting this way without even being conscious of it. So yes, in potency, everybody is able to do this work. However, not everybody has um, the same background. So it means a body worker or somebody who has an experience as um, a manipulative chiropractor, for example, those people may find this course very refreshing and interesting because they are coming from a different way of their own orientation instead of the client or the recipient orientation. Mm -hmm. If we are a yoga instructor, we already know the body works, and in Kriya Yogi, we already know uh, a lot about the energy work. And um, I always include certain meditations and practices. In one of the practices which I have been experiencing myself, um, I don't know if you know boxing Mike Tyson or uh, Muhammad mm -hmm. Ali. Yes. This experience was like a thousand Muhammad Ali's. And it really blew up from under my spine, out of my head. Uh, really opening uh, the Kundalini chain. Uh, that is what I later understood what it, it's mm -hmm. called, but it took me by surprise. Now, I would not want anybody to experience this 
Um, it's a hard experience. I did also in, in my way, but it's, it's really hard. Yes, and it opens up the system completely. And I, yeah. if you don't know how to handle it, even when yeah. I get the patients, they go like in some psychic state and yes. then it's not visible some of yes. them. Yes. So, um, so that's why it has to be very safe, mm -hmm. it has to be grounded, it has to be very careful. And when the mindset is only oriented to giving, not being able to receive, which most body workers find harder to receive than to mm -hmm. give, and that has to become neutral. Mm -hmm. um, so um, our little child is often acting from a lack, from a shortage. And once we can fulfill this, not outside, but inside ourselves, mm -hmm. then we can become a really balanced practitioner. But the practitioner is supposed to have, I think, some kind of future is like to be uh, emotional, stable, psychic, stable, healthy person, mm -hmm. and some kind of healthy habits to have. Mm, um, not necessarily because we have the we, clean energy and to be in balance and thing. Well, energy itself is neutral. Um, there is no. Uh, no, to balancing his energy or her energy. Yes. In, in so balance. when a practitioner is present. In the same she, state, I say. Uh, yes, <laughs> he or she puts his or her own, um, say, luggage or personality mm -hmm. or ego outside. Mm -hmm. When we're talking about a person and we're talking about the source or Brahman or mm -hmm. uh, the, the divine, then it means the divine is in everything, which means that the body is our temple. So we're doing sacral work, which is craniosacral, holistic health holy work and that means that you have to really respect yourself first in order to respect the other person mm -hmm. and that means you have to respect boundaries you have to listen very careful you have to read really and to not to insist to help or to exactly. implement exactly. because you say you're supposed to exactly because when a person is asking for help I have a problem, please help me. That is already a huge step for most people. Mm -hmm. And then if you are saying it has to be this, um, this person really want to be heard, felt, appreciated, mm -hmm. accepted, just the way they are right now. And that is already is the start of healing. It's amazing presentation. And what do you want to say, like a final of our live stream to the Bulgarians? Um, well, first of all, I'm very happy that I can be here present <laughs> with uh, Dr. Elia in, in life, in life. <laughs> and that um, most likely we will be able to hold uh, our uh, introduction ceremony here uh, in the near future. Um, anybody is welcome, is invited. Um, as you say, certain people is more preferable if they have a body worker's background, a medical background, anatomic background, psychotherapist background, physiotherapist background, uh, acupuncture, alternative, holistic, uh, but that is not a prerequisite. Um, uh, health, life itself is human, it's, it's a human being, and seeing through your delusions, our delusions which we're taught since we're little is uh, the biggest gift you can give yourself so anybody is, is welcome okay thank you very much for this interview and appreciate that you are in bulgaria in varna in my clinic and uh, you want to share your knowledge with uh, bulgarian healers because biodynamic is not so popular in my country and how i know many people want to learn from you and uh, you are like a guru for the osteopathy and biodynamics. Thank you very much to be with us and I hope the seminars will happen soon. Thank you for being with us. Thank you very much. Thank you.